We're going to set up the recording now. So, Oops. all right. So it looks like we just have a couple of students here, but that's fine. You should be able to get all of your answers or questions answered. Um, and we're also going to be recording this. So if you have friends who are also interested but couldn't make it, um, let them know that we'll be putting the link up in a few different places or they can email Hal or myself. Um, so I'm Veronica Whittemore. I'm an advisor in overseas programs. I advise for Czech Republic, Russia, South Korea, and most of the programs in England. Um, overseas programs is, oops, somebody else is joining, is uh, one of the study abroad units within the university. Um, Hal will explain a little bit more, I think, about that. Uh, Hal Matthews is our graduate peer advisor. Uh, he studied abroad a few years ago. And again, let him tell you a little bit more about that. But he's going to take you through a lot of the planning and application process of study abroad. And then at the end, we'll have plenty of time for questions and stuff like that. So how? All right, so I'll go ahead and share my screen. Oh, one more thing. If you guys have any questions, uh, you can either send them to group or just send them straight to me. Uh, in, or you can save them and ask them yourself at the end, however you guys want to do it, but I'll be collecting questions as Hal is speaking. All right, so um, thanks to all of you for coming today. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about planning for, applying to, and preparing for study abroad. Um, Veronica briefly introduced me, but just to reiterate, my name is Hal Matthews. Um, I'm a master's student at WashU, and I graduated from WashU with my bachelor's as well in 2016. Um, and I am a peer advisor for arts and sciences. And our office is a part of arts and sciences. So if you are a student in the Olin Business School, um, McKelvey School of Engineering, or Sam Fox School, you'll work directly with their study abroad offices. So this is mainly targeted to arts and sciences specifically. Um, I hold office hours every Monday from 1 to 2 p.m. Um, and you can schedule that here through this um, through the overseas programs website or directly through my Calendly link, which Veronica will send on to you later. Um, I'm also available to meet other times by appointment. This is just one hour that I've set. So if this doesn't work for you and you want to get together and, and talk about study abroad, um, I'm available many other times. Just shoot me an email directly hmatthews at whistle.edu and I'd be happy to come up with a time that we can meet. Okay, so today I'm going to start um, by telling you a little bit about my own personal experience in study abroad as a WashU student. Then we'll go over some things you should think about when planning a study abroad experience. Uh, I'll show you our program database and walk you through some tips for choosing the best program for you and talk a little bit about the application process. Um, there will be plenty of time for questions at the end, so if you do have questions, please don't hesitate to uh, speak up and, and, and ask. Um, and again, in this session, I am mainly going to focus on planning for study abroad, choosing a program, and applying to study abroad programs. And I know that many of you may have questions, you know, related to living in a foreign country, culture shock, you know, all, all of those really interesting um, aspects of, of life in a foreign country. And we are planning another session next semester in the spring that will cover those topics. Um, so just keep an eye out for that if you're interested in discussing any of those um, issues related to study abroad. Okay, so um, a little bit about my experience. Um, I studied abroad in Tübingen, Germany for my junior year of undergraduate. Uh, Tübingen is a small German college town with really beautiful architecture. This picture kind of shows the old town and the Neckar River, which, which runs through it. Um, I lived right by this church tower up here that you can see. Um, and I, I would walk down to the river every day, hang out in the boats a lot with friends. So it was a really nice place to be. Uh, I chose the study abroad program in Tübingen because it was best suited to my German major. I wanted to go abroad for an academic year because my goals were to strengthen my language skills. Uh, but I also wanted a lot of time to sort of adjust to German culture and experience that since it was so closely connected with my major and just to really experience life in Germany. Um, I did have to catch up a little bit on my coursework senior year because I made the decision to spend the full academic year abroad. But um, for me, it was, it was totally worth it. Um, 
I got a lot of time to, to experience life in Germany, but I also had the opportunity to travel a little bit more because I spent the full year abroad. Um, I think personally a semester would have been a little bit too short for me. So I was happy that I did the year. Um, the University of Tübingen program is a direct enroll program. So I simply lived as a normal university student in Germany. Um, I took regular university courses in German and I spent about 90% of my time speaking German. I really enjoyed the independence that my program gave me, um, but it did take a month or two to sort of adjust to my new lifestyle. Um, so it was a little bit challenging at first, but it paid off in the end. I think for me, the best thing about my experience in Tübingen was actually my living situation because I got to live in a self-governed student house with about 30 other local German students. Um, it was a really tightly knit community and social environment. And we had a ton of shared common spaces um, where we held weekly events, um, parties, poetry readings, concerts, things like that almost every week. And I made a lot of friends there that I'm still in touch with today. Um, I also really improved my German skills while I was there. Uh, before my study abroad program, I was one of the weaker German speakers in all of my classes. And after I was consistently the strongest German speaker of all of my peers. So it was certainly a really beneficial experience for me um, academically. Okay, so let's move on a little bit to uh, planning for study abroad. So while my decision process was pretty easy because of the limited options available to German majors for study abroad, you may have a lot more options available to you based on your major or minor. So it's important to consider a number of factors um, to find the best program for you. And I know that study abroad and, pl and planning for study abroad can be quite overwhelming, especially when you have a lot of other things going on. So it helps to start by asking yourself some questions to figure out what you really want from the study abroad experience. Um, so first, the most important thing to consider is academics. Study abroad is an academic experience and it should be designed to enhance your whole academic plan. It should complement your degree program and emphasize advanced work within your major, minor, or an other area of significant academic concentration. Different programs have very different course offerings. So looking at the exact course offerings of different programs is definitely one of the best ways to narrow down options that are available to you. So I highly recommend really looking very closely at what the academic offerings are for each program you're interested in. Some programs also have the opportunity to take part in internships or to conduct individual research projects. And you can often use such experiences to develop a senior thesis or to continue research after study abroad. And I know there are some students that have received scholarships from National Geographic and Fulbright um, to continue on with research after graduating that they started while they were doing a study abroad program. So it really can be a, a exciting academic experience. Um, but I also think it's important to be really intentional about your personal goals. So beyond academics, what do you want to get out of this experience? You know, do you want like me to learn a language? Do you want to explore a specific region of the world? Do you want to just immerse yourself in a totally foreign environment? Do you just want to eat some good food from somewhere else? challenge your comfort zone, you know, make sure that you choose an environment that is suitable to you as well. But um, my personal piece of advice is don't be afraid to take the road less traveled. Really make sure you're doing the program that's best for you, not just the one that your friends are doing. Um, it's also important to think about when you want to go and for how long. So what fits best with your academic schedule? Would you rather have a shorter experience over the summer so that you don't miss a semester at WashU? Or do you want to go for a full semester in the fall or spring, or maybe even a whole year? Um, it may help to speak with your departmental advisor about timing your study abroad experience in terms of coursework and course requirements. Um, further, what type of program do you want to go on? So overseas programs has a wide variety uh, of types of programs abroad. So for example, in exchange and direct enroll programs, you'll be treated like a local degree seeking student, like the program that I did, uh, meaning that there isn't really a third party involved in um, external courses or programming or things like that. 
And these programs generally have a more independent culture around them, and they can be really challenging to adjust to, but they also give you a really good opportunity for cultural integration and really feel like you're a part of, of the area where you're living. Um, another option would be provider-led programs. And these are run through partnerships with other organizations such as SIT and IES. And they have a lot of diverse options. Um, in addition to traditional classroom settings, you know, in host universities or at an institute abroad, a number of these provider programs offer things like internships, field-based experiences, and experiential learning opportunities that you may not get with a direct enroll program. Um, other programs offer a more structured environment where you can take courses with other American students, if that's something that you're interested in, or with other study abroad students. Um, you could also do a faculty-led program, and members of WashU's faculty lead several academic courses abroad every year, and that allows you to often put into context what you've learned in the classroom at WashU. Uh, these programs usually last about a few weeks and are generally summer programs. They're typically focused on a specific academic area or on a specific course. Um, one thing to consider when thinking through these options, all of these options, is who you want to be in the classroom with. Do you want to share a classroom with local students, with other study abroad students, or with a mixture of both? Um, that may seem like a small thing, but it can really have a major impact on your experience when you're abroad. I also encourage you to think about housing. Um, what do you want your housing situation to be? Do you want to live in a dorm with other study abroad students? Do you want to live with local students? Uh, do you want your own apartment or an apartment with a roommate? Do you want to live in a homestay with a host family um, in, in your host country? Programs offer a variety of living situations and some of them offer a mixture of living arrangements where you can do more than, than one of those options or maybe you go to a homestay for a few weeks and you spend the rest of the time in a dorm. There's lots of different combinations. So it's important to think about what living arrangements you'd like to have when you're abroad. Um, language is another big thing to consider. Do you want to go to a host country where English is the predominantly spoken language or would you like to go somewhere where another language is spoken? Not all programs in uh, foreign language countries have language prerequisites, but most programs in foreign language countries do have at least a required or optional language course for you to take while you are there. And to make the most of your experience abroad, it's generally important that you at least gain a basic knowledge of the host country language. Um, and the last big thing to consider would be program prerequisites. Um, most programs require a certain amount of major or minor coursework or language coursework before you are qualified to participate. So you need to make sure to check the prerequisites for programs that you are interested in. Uh, there's also a universal WashU requirement that you must have a 3.0 GPA in order to study abroad. Some host universities and majors require an even higher GPA, but don't worry if your GPA is lower than 3.0 you can petition to be selected for your program anyways. And some programs are more selective than others regarding GPA requirements, um, but many may still accept you if you have a GPA below 3.0. So when you are deciding on what program you want to do, there's um, two really helpful places to look. And the first is the Overseas Programs database. And the second is the General Overseas Programs website. So I'm gonna show you both of those very quickly. Let me stop the share, whoops. And pull that up. Okay, so here's the program database and it's sa.wustl.edu. Um, and this is where you can go to search for different programs. If you go here to program search, this will pull up the uh, database search engine. And here you see there's a lot of different search parameters that you can put in to um, search for programs that are available to you. Um, I recommend searching by major at first when you're starting to see what's available for you, since this is an academic experience and you do want to be searching uh, for a program that's in line with your academic areas of concentration. So I'm just gonna pretend that I'm an anthropology major and go ahead and search. Um, as you can see, there's 
a ton of programs available for anthropology majors, like a lot. Uh, so you'll want to think of other, uh, th this is kind of why I was mentioning all those questions to go through before, because it'll help you narrow down the options that are available to you if you have a major like anthropology that has so many programs. Um, so I'm just going to pick something here. Let's go with an SIT program. Okay, I'm going to look at SIT Study Abroad India, Public Health, Gender and Community Action. So when I click on the program here, it takes me to the WashU program brochure where I can get a better idea of what this program is. Um, I'm on the overview tab here and here we have some highlights about what this program is. Um, obviously you study in New Delhi um, and working in the field of public health. You spend extensive time in the field. So if field work is something that you're interested in. This may be a good option for you. There's a focus on women, children, tribal communities, and other underserved populations. Um, another big thing is uh, that you'll learn Hindi as a part of this course, um, and you'll have an independent study project. So again, talking about that econo uh, uh, economic, that academic aspect of, of the program um, that can be really beneficial. Um, there's eligibility requirements on this page as well. Here you see the GPA requirement and the approved areas of study. And here are program deadlines. So I also encourage to, you to look through the other tabs of the, the brochure. Here under academics, we have information about courses and course credit. Also the language of instruction, which here is English. And you can see additional opportunities here, research. Student life, it kind of gives you an overview of the location of New Delhi, what life is like there, and housing. Um, Again, very important. Here we see that this program includes a homestay in New Delhi for about seven weeks. So again, an important thing to consider when you're choosing a program. Finances, um, we have budget sheets for all of our programs where you can get an overview of the estimated cost of a program. Here we have the billable subtotal and these are program costs that are usually billed through WashU. So things like tuition, um, health insurance and housing expenses, which for some programs are, are built directly through WashU. Um, and then we also have just an estimation of additional costs that may come up, like um, getting a passport if you don't already have one, your airfare, which you will cover, um, or the cost of getting your own student visa or residence permit. So these are additional expenses that may arise as a part of your program. And then on this resources pages, you can see who you need to follow up with if you have more questions about a specific program. So the program advisor here is John. Um, so he would be the one to talk to in overseas programs if you wanted to learn more about the program or if you had any specific questions about it. So I'm gonna go back to overview here. So let's say you've looked you know, a little bit through the brochure and you're still unsure about it. It's not quite enough information. Well, luckily for programs like this, um, SIT has an additional website, which we can pull up, which has a lot more information on here about um, the program. They again have a total overview of it in, in great detail um, and lots of tabs with different information, you know, regarding what it's like to be in a homestay, more specific information. But I would mainly direct you here to this academics page, um, which is really, uh, in my opinion, the most important place to look where you can get a really close idea of what the coursework is gonna be while you're there in India. Um, for example, here we can see the program has five different uh, credit bearing courses. So there's two thematic seminars, um, a public health workshop, a fields methods and ethics course and an independent study project. Um, this is all useful information, but really cool is the fact that down here, you can actually look at the specific courses that are offered while you're on this program and even see a syllabus of some of them. So you can really get into the nitty gritty detail of um, the academic course offerings that are available to you while you're here. So I highly recommend taking a look on program websites along with WashU's database. Um, if you're applying to this program, this is also where you would start the program specific application for WashU. Let me go back to this tab very quickly. For, for WashU, we also have an Apply Now tab here, and this is where you can start your program application through, through WashU. You would log in and it would take you through the steps. 
Um, some other pieces of information I wanted to point out for you are on our overseas programs website. So if you go to overseas.wustl.edu and go to the menu here and click on study abroad, this will give you an overview of um, a lot of information regarding planning, advising, applying, preparing for study abroad and your experience while you're abroad. All of these different tabs here have, have links that will take you to different sites full of information uh, depending on what step of the process you're in. We also have uh, frequently asked questions here. So if there's initial uh, additional questions you have as you're going through this process, they, they may, um, the answers may be here. Um, also, if you go on um, uh, the menu under study abroad, you can look at advising. And we have a page here of advisors. And if you look at the study abroad advisors directory, we have an overview of all of the advisors, both in overseas programs and the departmental advisors. So there's two different types of advisors when you are applying for these programs and when you are preparing to go abroad. Overseas programs advisors, I've mentioned already, that would be someone like Veronica or John. They are ones that can give you a lot of program specific answers. They can tell you a lot of detail about the specific program that you're interested in, about the process of applying for study abroad, and also the experience of living in a different culture if you have questions related to that. The departmental advisors are not in overseas programs, they are in individual academic departments. So your departmental advisor will depend on what academic department you're in. For example, if I'm in anthropology or archaeology, it would be Alyssa Kuhlman. Alyssa would be the person I would talk to if I had questions related to getting course credit or program prerequisites, what type of course work do I need to do abroad? And when I'm coming up with my study plan before I go abroad, which is a part of the um, application process, you would have to meet with your departmental advisor to plan out sort of what courses you're going to take and how they will translate to uh, course credit when you return to WashU. Okay, so I'm gonna go back really quickly into my presentation. Okay, so again, just reiterating um, a couple of the things I just mentioned. When you are applying to study abroad, there's two different people you can talk to, study abroad advisors and departmental advisors. Again, study abroad advisors will give you information about specific study abroad programs and the general experience of studying abroad. Departmental advisors will give you, will help you make a study plan. They will tell you about academics and course credit and if you wanna know if there's a certain course, for example, while you're abroad that will count towards your major, that would be a question for your departmental advisor. Um, so then what is the application process? You'll likely need to fill out two applications. Uh, one would be for overseas programs and WashU specifically. And another one will be for the host university or provider organization. So with the example I just showed you, there would be one application through overseas programs at WashU and a second application through SIT, the program provider. Um, oftentimes the applications may have different deadlines, but it's generally a good idea to just fill out both applications at the same time so that you don't get caught up with deadlines or certain requirements later on. Also the applications may have similarities between them so it can be helpful to just get it all out of the way at once. For overseas programs, you do need two letters of recommendation. And like I mentioned, you'll have to complete a study plan with a departmental advisor. The provider specific application may have different requirements, but overseas programs can often help you complete these applications by sharing certain application materials or helping provide certain documents that you may need to fill out those applications. Um, again, notice the deadlines for study abroad applications. It's February 1st for fall semester and academic year programs. Um, February 15th for summer programs, and May 1st for, pro for programs that are starting the following spring semester. Okay, so that's all the information I wanted to throw at you for now, but I would be more than happy to take um, any questions that you have or um, talk about study abroad. Um, any questions, feel free to, feel free to shoot.
Hi, so I guess I'll go first. Uh, I was just wondering as far as like paying for housing when you're on a study abroad trip, does that, does what you would pay for housing here roll over or is there like an additional fee? Do you need help with this one, Hal? Yeah, I'll direct that to you, Veronica. <laughs> yeah. So with the housing, you'll pay whatever the program charges for housing. Um, a lot of them do end up being billed through Wash U accounts, um, but it'll, the program itself, either our budget sheets, you can kind of see as long as they're updated for the correct year or actually on the provider's website, you can see the price for housing. Um, we try to work with the provider to charge through your website so that hopefully whatever um, scholarships or grants or whatever you might be using for housing at WASH, you could roll over. But you definitely want to talk to your financial aid advisor because depending on where that money is coming from, they might have certain stipulations on what it can be used for when it comes to study abroad. Okay. And, and I was also... Oh, oh sorry. I was just going to mention if sorry. it's a summer program, you end up paying directly to the programs for sure, unless it's specifically a WASH you run program. Okay, got it. Thanks. Yeah. Did you have I another was... question? Yeah, I was just gonna ask, could you um, um, could you like send the presentation in the chat or if there's like a way to get that? Um, I'm not sure if Hal has a link for it, but I'll definitely be posting it on our website underneath Hal's um, little intro, which I have a link to, um, or on our Instagram, if you follow us on there. Um, yeah, so we'll post a few places. How do you, are you able to? send it in a link at this time um, or if you send a follow-up email i could i could give you a, a a link for it we could send it that way okay so if you go to this link um and just scroll down you'll see how and it'll have his calendly and then we're also going to be posting the presentation there by the end of the week sounds good thanks um, we had a couple of student questions that from our Google form, so I can ask those if Spencer or Gina, do you, if you have any other questions, feel free to jump in. Um, but one of the questions was about visas and does every program require a visa? Yes, yeah, so um, not every program requires a visa. Different programs have different requirements. That's definitely a question to take up with a study abroad advisor. Um, when you're when you're planning ahead. Um, but it is good to keep in mind that if you do have a visa requirement for your program, that can be um, sometimes a time and money intensive process. It can cost money to um, apply for a visa. It can also, it might require you to travel to a consulate in advance. Um, and you may also have to send in your passport as a, a part of that process, which would restrict you from, from traveling for a certain period of time before you go abroad. And I also know that, that certain visas have different requirements as to you know, when you can travel. Some, some programs you're not allowed to travel until the first day um, of, of your visa, or you have to travel within the first seven days of your visa. So it's a good idea to keep those um, requirements in mind and be thinking about that when you're looking at programs that it could be an extra step in the process um, when you're going through these applications. Yeah, and I'll just add that uh, the advisors and overseas programs, um, depending on the program, we may be forwarding you some information. Certain schools will send us different materials that you'll need. Um, so we may be communicating with you or if you're working through a provider, they may be doing group applications and have a group deadline. So just keeping track of those. Um, but the overseas program, we're not going to fill out the visa for you and we can't kind of review it. So those can be detailed and just keeping an eye on it is important, especially at starting once you're accepted or even before it just because um, especially with if you're planning to go abroad this in the spring, some students want to travel over Thanksgiving or over the winter break. And, and that just might not be possible if you don't have your passport, um, it might require you to get a second passport, which students have done in the past, but that is expensive. Um, so I was gonna ask you to reiterate again, the difference between departmental and study overseas programs advisors, but you did that a few times. So 
hopefully that's really stuck that, that you do have a few different people you can talk to uh, when you're starting your study abroad. Um, and how I'll answer this question because I thought of it and it's kind of a trick question and I don't want to put you on the spot, but you can earn certain distribution credits while you study abroad, um, but not all of them. You cannot earn uh, intensive writing or um, I think applied numeracy while you're abroad, but you can earn an LCD, um, an SSC, a humanities or NSM, I think is the fourth one. Um, but it is a limited number. So for the summer, it's usually three credits towards it. For a semester, it's six. And I think for a year, you can do, it's either nine or 12. Um, but that's something that you can think about while you're doing your study plan. Um, and with LCDs, just because I'm the advisor for a lot of the programs in England, you can't earn an LCD for basically an English speaking culture. Um, so if you study abroad in England and you take English Lit, that's not gonna count as an LCD. But if you study abroad in England and take a course on French literature, you could earn an LCD towards that. So just wanted to add that in. That's one of the ap academic things that really, you can ask an overseas programs advisor rather than the departmental advisor. Um, how are there other things that you feel like mentioning? I would just encourage you all to uh, reach out to me if you if you want to just talk more about study abroad in general. Maybe you don't have super specific program related questions yet, but you want to know more about the experience. Um, I'm happy to have any any study abroad you know related conversation you want to have. And if there's something you want to talk to me about or or ask me that you're you'd be less comfortable talking to you know an official study abroad or departmental advisor about. Um, I'm a student just like you. I'm happy to have those conversations as well. So feel free to reach out. I'm just putting a link. I had deleted the HTTPS because I thought it would look nicer without it, but apparently I won't hyperlink without it. Um, so I just put a link in the chat and that's to our additional ambassador. So how's a graduate student? He's a little bit more involved with us and what we're doing in the office, but we also have um, actually a decent number of ambassadors this semester. And those are other students who are probably in their senior year now, just because most people study abroad when they're juniors. So they've just returned. Um, like Hal, they're very excited to talk about study abroad. That's why they've volunteered for these positions. Um, and we have them listed by country. So, and when you also look at them, you can see by major. So maybe you have questions specifically about what's it like to study abroad if I'm pre-med. And they may not have gone to the country that you're interested in, but they could still be a good person to talk to um, and how that experience was for them. Um, so I would definitely say reach out. Um, do any other questions come up? No, doesn't look like it. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but yeah, definitely once we put this recording up um, with the presentation, please share it with any friends who weren't able to make it. I know it's been a crazy year and virtual events are kind of all over the place. So not always have time for them, um, but we appreciate you being here. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's thank really you. Helpful. Thanks guys. Bye. I'm just gonna stop recording.